welcome to my studio. Today I'm working on a little embryo painting. We call these embryos because I first started out as a medical illustrator and many years ago I was doing some small paintings and Jack said, oh my gosh, those are baby paintings. Let's call them embryos in honor of your years working as a medical illustrator. So that's what this is, is an embryo. It's painted on an ampersand cradle panel. This is ampersand makes these. I get them at um, Cheap Joe, not Cheap Joe's. I, you can get them at CheapJoe's.com. I get them at Jerry Arter, Jerry's Artorama.com. But it's I paint the sides black with acrylic. Put a hanging wire on the back, and then before I paint the sides black, I actually do a, a coat of white acrylic on the front. I just like to add that extra little priming. Then I paint the sides with black acrylic. Then I also, with my white acrylic, make the square on the back that I use to put the title of the painting, the uh, number of authenticity. I sign it with my name, and then if I want to personalize it, if somebody purchases this and would like me to personalize it to them, there's room to do that back here. So this is these are wonderful to paint on. They're really a lot of fun. So they come in all different sizes. These are six inches by six inches. And just really a lot of fun to paint on. Okay, let's get to work. I'm going to be painting the trumpet vine up here that will be cascading over the doorway. Let me use my brushes. I wasn't totally prepared here. Move my thinner over to this other side. And I'm working in oil paints. I use for my thinner, I use turpenoid odorless thinner because I work in my home and my living room is my studio so I don't want this to smell the house up with regular turpentine. So anyway, I begin, this is a mixture of my cadmium orange and alizarin crimson. And actually, I want to get a little darker mixture here. And I paint my flowers first. I block those in first. Flowers first, leaves last. The reason I do this, and you'll see in a little bit, is I want to keep my flower color really nice and crisp and clean. So I, I go ahead and paint it first, and then I'll come back and add the greens around it. And I just use, these are different mixtures. This is cadmium orange plus cadmium red light. I just use different different combinations because I want a variety of color within this in within my flowers. If you look at flowers there you see all different hues and just a variety of different colors. I'm using a bright brush that's a square square ended brush and I can use, actually I can use that corner to make smaller brush strokes or I can use the full broad side of it to make broader brush strokes. Okay, now I'm going to, I've got my flower color in there. Do a little bit more in here. I want a little bit of lighter. The sun is coming in from the left, upper left, so some of these will catch just get some lighter colors in there. Again, I want some variation within this mass of color that I'm blocking in for the flowers. Now I'll start with my green. This is a mixture of sap green plus lemon yellow. This gives a nice warm green. Now, you can see, well, that didn't really pick it up there. As I'm painting the green around the orange, See how my brush picked up some of that orange on there? I have to keep wiping my brush, and this is why I paint the flower color first, because my brush picks up that color, and if I had painted the green first and then painted the orange on top of it, it would dirty my oranges. So I, I just want to keep my flower color clean. Now I will come back and add some more orange on top of this, but I have to be very, very careful when I do that, keep my brush very clean and to add the detail in the flowers. But this is a smaller, bright brush. It's got that square, square end, but then I can also use the corner 
work around my my flower color. And I use the greens to kind of shape shape my clumps of flowers. And then this is a mixture I've actually got a little phthalo blue plus liquid. Just gives me a nice cool dark within the foliage. And this is phthalo blue plus white. Just like the flowers, I want a lot of different variety of colors within my within my foliage. Now that panel has a little bit of texture on it, so you have to make sure to fill in all the little little white spots here and there. I'm going to use a little smaller brush. These paintings are pretty tiny, so I have to use some of my smaller brushes here to get some of the, the detail I want. Again, this is my sap green plus lemon yellow. And I want my leaves to break down over the over the lintel over the door. And I use some of the different colors. The sun hits some of these. You can see how one brush stroke says a lot on these smaller paintings. I'm going to bring some dark in here behind this trunk where the foliage actually goes down behind the trunk. And we'll add some little lights on our leaves up here. Now I get my mall stick. Now this is a this is actually a hook that we got at Container Store that's made for lifting clothes off of a tall clothes rack and uh, it makes a perfect mall stick. It's about six feet long. I can hook it over the top of my easel and I'll have then I have a place to, to rest my my arm, my wrist as I do some of this finer detail. So now I can come back and make some of my finer details in the flower. I have to be very careful here and just lay the color on top. And this keeps me from picking up that underlying green and getting my flowers all dirty. Now I'm cleaning my brush out. I use a lot of tissue. And just add a few more leaves here and there. I'm going to add some cadmium yellow into that cadmium orange just for some highlight in those orange flowers and those trumpet flowers. Just let the sunshine hit these. Really highlight those. Get the feeling of that sun. And I'm going to let a little strand of the vine come down over the door. This helps to give the painting depth. Just a few little, doesn't need to be much, but just a little bit. Now that vine coming down, I'm going to take, this is what is called a fine liner brush and this just makes a real fine line. And I can just pull some of my, use some of my green mixture with a little white mixed into it. And I'm going to pull some vine down into that door. Now the door is still wet, so that makes it very easy to pull this down. And I just... Let that vine kind of 
dangle down. And I'm going to get a few little stems here. Just gives that kind of airiness. There we go. And then I'm going to put some stems up into my flowers up in here. Just give that feeling of detail. Move, move the mall stick over so it's out of my way. And I'm just bracing on the easel and my arm then, my wrist then braces on the other wrist. My right wrist braced on the left, well I guess forearm. And let's bring another little tendril down here. This will be darker in front of this shadow. And let's bring another little line down this way. These little, this just gives the feeling of that detail. You can do this pretty loosely, but it just gives some interest in these flowers, this vine up here. Now we're going to add a few more little flowers on here, smaller brush. Yeah. Oh, that's too big. Okay. Make sure my brush is clean. Pick up some of my flower color. I'm going to have a couple flowers in here. This cups down. These catch the sunlight. And I'll have some green coming in under this. This vine out here comes in front of some of that green. That just breaks, breaks that. Again, gives it some dimension, some depth. some little darker flowers here. And then we'll let some lighter flowers come over this because the where that vine goes in it's it's going to be a little lighter there. The, the, that portion of, of the plant comes out so the sunlight will really be hitting here. And let's bring some light onto these. And these will be catching some light. So that light helps give the, the plant some dimension. There's flowers that are out closer to the light then there's flowers in the depth that don't get the get hit by the sun as much. There will even be some dark ones then down underneath here. Now those little flowers have deep deep centers within them so now I get my little fine liner brush again. And we just add some of the centers within them. I need a 
little better, bigger brush to do that. That one's almost too fine. So I'm not, it's not getting it, my brush strokes in the paint. There we go. And we just want those, some of that darkness in there to give a little dimension to these flowers. These are tiny, so they're not going to be just minute, minute detail. They're painted impressionistically like the rest of my paintings. I want to keep my voice so that somebody that looks at that says, yep, that Mickey Sincaric painted that. That's the secret to developing your art is you want it you don't want somebody to look at your paintings and think they've been painted by 15 different people. It's, they need to be able, over time you need to develop your own voice that people look and say, oh yeah, that, that was painted by Nancy Watkins or that was painted by Sam Smith. And you just, we develop a voice. So that's how I, I paint these. I may don't have much to do on this. I may come back and do a little bit more, but just add a few little little highlights on these flowers. The ones that are coming out. Really catching the sun. I want the sun to catch those petals. I really appreciate you watching my YouTube videos. Please subscribe to my channel and just you can also visit my blog the link is in the description below it's also the address is on the final frame of my video and subscribe to that and i just thank you for following along if you have questions please feel free to ask them in the comment section and you just have a wonderful wonderful day and please be safe in these days of the covid virus Please make sure to wear your mask and keep your social distancing. So you have a wonderful, wonderful day, and thank you again.